scarlet blaze, skirmish in the fog. The Empire captures Garrig Mach, and when the lords of Fargus and Leicester declare their allegiances to the Central Church, they incur Edelgard's ire. She sends one army to the Alliance under the command of her war minister, Count Burglies, and leads a second herself to the kingdom's castle Gaspar, the bastion of Northern Rome. Lady Edelgard, we have received an urgent message from Count Roe. Apparently, he has taken up arms against the kingdom. What is he thinking? He was supposed to join his troops with ours so we could use our combined strength to strong-arm more of their neighbors into declaring fealty for us. What use is a plan if the man won't follow it? It also seems that Lord Lenato one of Rose Castled Bannermen has gone so far as to mount a one-man crusade against the Archbishop. He has long held deep enmity for Lady Rhea, and likely leapt into action at news of Garrick Mach's fall. I should have suspected he would lack self-control when it came to his vengeance. Naturally, the Kingdom mobilized troops in response, and now move to strike Lenato down as we speak. So, where does this put us? Can we get reinforcements to him in time? You want to save the man, Your Majesty? If I may, we would march all that way for... what, exactly? Imagine the consequences of leaving him to die. We need our vassals to believe the Empire will always come to their aid. Always. Of course, Your Majesty. I will make the arrangements straight away. The region northeast of Castle Gaspar is shrouded in deep fog this time of year. That likely accounts for why they are currently only engaging in minor skirmishes. Which means we still have time to intervene. Good. Now make our plans known to the others. I'm counting on you, Hubert. At once, Your Majesty. All of this makes me even more concerned about the situation in Leicester. Nothing has impeded Minister Burglies' march east, has it? It has not. In fact, Count Gloucester has given him leave to garrison our troops there. I hear he has begun turning the screws on House Ordelia, and any other lords who have yet to make their allegiances clear. On the other hand, the Alliance's more powerful houses have united in their condemnation of Count Gloucester's actions. The Minister may soon face a battle with Houses Regan and Goneril, if not others. I can't picture a battle the Minister wouldn't win most handily. Still, the Alliance's new leader, Claude, is an unknown quantity. We can't risk underestimating his skill. Quite right. One can never be too cautious. A moment. Hello. Ahem. Hmm. <laughs> On another matter. What do you think? Truly shocked. Hey.
actually. soon, all right? Wait up. Greetings. Welcome. friend. Supplies are the lifeblood of any army. Everything has its use. something is this it see you around got a second What do you think? Hmm. I have agreement. Excuse me. Actually... I be of service.
Please, listen. Which battle do you wish to reflect? I'll continue gathering records of your battles. day to you. Are you sure? <laughs> Another thing. <sighs> so, what did you want to talk about, Hubert? I thought we might discuss you, actually. You wish to know more about those eldritch powers of yours, yes? Ah, right. Edelgard said I might have a chance to get to the bottom of that. Kinda figured she'd forgotten since it's been two years now. Pray accept my apology on her behalf. It has been more trying to find answers than we originally expected. With Lord Arendelle lost to the winds, it has been a trial combing through what little evidence he left behind. And of course, we are undertaking all of this in the midst of painstaking preparations for war. Lord Arendelle is the guy who could shapeshift like Tomas, right? The one who escaped? Correct. However, we have recently learned that he goes by another name. Hollis. Did you figure out if my powers are the same as his? And what are my powers anyway? Not some kind of curse, I hope. A fine question. I think it is safe to assume that you possess some form of magic. However, it is not the same ilk as the white and black magic we are familiar with. Yours is, shall we say, Dark magic. Heathen craft that is structured differently from conventional spells. <sighs> you are familiar with those who slither in the dark, yes? People like Tomas, Kranya, and Tallis. We believe they possess the same power as you. 
that's tough to accept, but the similarities are too great for it to be anything else. Still, what you think does not matter in the end, because my mind is already made up. So, what? Are you gonna banish me someplace far away because I'm too dangerous? It's fine if you do. I'm used to being cut loose. That's just how life as a sellsword goes. Do not be absurd. If we were done with you, we would kill you, not banish you. Fortunately, you are exceedingly talented, and Her Majesty trusts you implicitly. The way I see it, we stand to profit best by keeping you in our service. So, you trust me too? Um, thanks, I guess. But now we have a more important question to answer. Namely, how you came by your powers. I thought I heard someone talking in here. We were just finishing up. Do you have business with our mercenary friend, Your Majesty? I do. And I suspect it's related to what you were just talking about. Then I will leave you to it. Pray excuse me. <sighs> you should see the look on your face. Did Hubert threaten you? Don't let it get to you. Yes, he's quite good at that kind of thing, but it comes from a place of caution. I wish that was all that was bothering me. I want to transform the world into a place where no one has to feel trapped by where they came from. When I am done, it won't matter where you are born, whose blood you have, or what powers course through you. Everyone will be treated as equals. That's what we're fighting for, and that is what this war is going to achieve. So believe me when I say this, I don't care who you are. I only care about what you have done, and what you have yet to do. Well, thanks, Edelgard. I feel a little better now. <laughs>